Hey everybody, Peter Mancuso here from a little show called Now That's What I Call a Franchise. Maybe you've heard of it. Before getting into this week's episode, um, I just wanted to talk about some stuff going on. Um, we record our episodes you know, months in advance, but as of the release of this episode, uh, both the Writers Guild of America and the Screen Actors Guild uh, have gone on strike against basically all of mainstream Hollywood, uh, which is represented by the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. Basically, both unions are demanding their fair share of the profits that their hard work and uh, dedication produces for these, you know, multinational media conglomerates and uh, their overpaid CEOs. Now, when SAG went on strike, there were some questions around what counted as promotion, uh, something that could be considered crossing the picket line. Um, and there's been a lot of confusion and misinformation and mixed signals about this, uh, particularly for non-union members, um, even just covering older films released by these struck companies. And on our show, that's all we do, right? We've covered like three franchises owned by Disney, which I think speaks volumes about the state of the industry. Um, and now we're focusing on Batman, which of course is owned by Warner Brothers. So what do we do? Well, after sifting through all the information the best we could, we've decided to continue our release schedule as planned. Uh, we're not doing this out of laziness. Uh, if anything, delaying our schedule would actually give us more time that we desperately need uh, to watch these films and record our thoughts. But by releasing our episodes as planned, uh, we at least have the chance to insert this intro uh, and make it clear in no uncertain terms, Viviana and I and the New Arts Workshop stand with workers, above and below the line, striking or not, unionized or not. And we're not going to remove this intro from our episodes until the studios satisfy the union's demands. If you want to help the cause, post about it on social media or donate to each union's respective strike funds. Alone, we can't do anything. Together, we can change everything. All right, I'm getting off my soapbox now. Time for the show. You're listening to the New Artist Workshop. Crime stalking our city by night and day is on the increase. That man, who with the faithful Robin, wages unending war against all criminals. Welcome back to your favorite podcast. Now, that's what I call a franchise. I'm Peter Mancuso. And I'm Viviana Metzger. And this is the show where Peter and I pick a film franchise and go through every single installment. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And to be clear, we are defining a franchise as a series of films with at least four entries. So, Viviana, what are we talking about today? So today, we are talking about the 1940 serial film, whoa, Batman whoa, whoa, whoa. and Robin. 19... It didn't come out in 1940. I said 49. No, you said 1940s serial film. Today we are talking about the... (laughs) (laughs) Today we are talking about the 1949 serial film, Batman and Robin. And this is your one and only spoiler warning, so if you haven't seen it, uh, go to YouTube, check it out, and come back. Yeah, this is another one that I I would be shocked if anyone listening to this has, has watched this. Um, well, actually, hold on. I'm curious, because on Letterboxd, you can see how many people have logged it. I'm curious. I remember the last one, it was like 5,000, only 5,000 people, like, had said they seen they had seen it. I wonder if this one is any better, um, because it's, like, we'll, we'll talk about it, but there's definitely things about it that, that I think are much better. Um, it's pretty great. Oh, great? I don't know about great. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Though. Oh, even less people. So the last one... The last one on Letterboxd, about two and a half thousand people logged it. This one is about half that. So, like, maybe a little bit more than a thousand people have logged this movie that we're about to talk about. Go watch it! Go watch it! It's, it's not as bad as, as I thought it was going to be. But, Viviana, why don't we you... Didn't, we didn't do it in one day, either, so... That it, helped. That definitely helped. Yeah, it was... <laughs> we, we That was a better watching method, um, but it was also, like, this was just better in general. Mm-hmm. So that also made it easier. Yeah. But, but Vivian, why don't you read the letterbox blurb? Ooh, excuse me, letterbox blurb for us. Okay, so this fifteen-chapter serial 
pits Batman and Robin against the wizard who uses a device that allows him to control machinery to hold the city hostage. Um, and as far as I know from what I saw, the wizard is not from the comics at all. He's another original villain He's Which is so funny because like, a guy. Because well, I mean, he he does have. Well, I forget this. Did, did, does he have? He doesn't have magic powers. He's just like no, has no, the technology. He has science powers. He has science. Okay. Um. Well, it's interesting with this one. I'm surprised. Um. It didn't feature like the Joker or the or like any. I thought it was gonna because be. if we remember from the last one, it. This isn't confirmed, but. A, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that the villain of the last one was going to be the Joker and then they kind of like decided let's make it more patriotic and then they made him like an evil Japanese man yeah so you would think like okay now that the war's over like this is 1949 like they, they would lean more into the Batman of it I guess uh, and they don't I guess because like it I think it might be difficult to have such a drawn out story with a villain like the Joker, because, like, what is what is he going to do? Just, like, hire new goons every week? Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I guess you'd have or some like, elaborate plan or, like, or something. Or, like, he's going to, like, he's going to get captured and then, like, escape every every episode? Like, do you know No, what? I mean, but I guess he could not get captured, right? No, I know. I just mean, like, I don't know. Be- because I think there's, like, new stuff that can be introduced which there is in this mm. right with the science and everything and there's like it, it's a bit more layered like I don't know with the government or mm. whatever but like with the Joker he's kind of just like a lone he, he, he's a contractor <laughs> <laughs> just like whatever he'll just do whatever for whatever yeah so it's like what what would be unless he teamed up but then you would have to have this whole thing. Then they would have to, they, the Joker and, you know, Penguin or Scarecrow or somebody would have to, you know, they'd yeah. have to be in cahoots. It'd be a which, whole thing. Which, spoiler alert, is kind of the premise of the next one that oh. we're going to watch. Nice. nice. Um, is like the villains all kind of team up. Yes, because um, by themselves, they kind of suck. <laughs> no, no, come on. No, not suck, but just mean like. I mean, there have been plenty of these movies where it's just them. They're going to take. Like, over the entire city just by joking around. Da, da, da. <laughs> by just joking? That's what the Joker does. He's like, it's me, the Joker. I'm joking around, baby. I think that was in the Joker script, the Joaquin Phoenix movie. No, it was Of course it was not. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, I... <laughs> what I What I have noticed is I think that it would take a lot more uh, in general budget costume production design all of that to make it more Gotham-y right so that's yeah. why they're just using like Culver City like, yeah exactly <laughs> like that, that's the thing is like it's very clearly like LA again that's the same thing like the last one it's like, car. <laughs> like like even when they're in the city yeah. It looks like LA, not New York. Yeah. Or like some kind of more like doesn't that even have to be shot in New York, but like there's New York kind of cities and LA kind of cities. Yeah. And and it's very clear, even in the city part, that yeah. like this isn't like quite the right urban environment. Yeah. But then when they go outside the city, it's very obvious. Like the hills, the, the vegetation, like it's very yeah. clear. It's it's yeah. like the desert. No, yeah, um, they look like they're like in San Francisco or something yeah. when they're in the city. Um, but I, I don't know. Maybe I, I would say, I say that, but I don't know what their budget was like. But well, I think like, this was also. I'll talk about this in the background, like in comparison to like what they did, you know, like effects wise or something. But like that, I it takes a lot more to make it specialized like that. So I think that's why. Mm-hmm. These ones, especially like low budget serials, have not. They're, they're kind of made for cheap, right? They're not. Which is the idea of a serial. Yeah, so right? they're not going to go like, all in and make a whole like Gotham City set and then like yeah, no. you know put do like three hours of makeup for a Joker and stuff. Yeah, like that. serials were always cheap, right? Cheap, th- kind of like a cheap thrill, so to speak. And <laughs> you made that joke last time. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> 
But just, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, um, you know, it was just, it was not, here's what I want to know is, did, like, it's goofy to us. At the time, was it goofy? I think yes, right, is my point. Because it's like, oh, it's like the 40s. It's like, but before then, there was, like, these amazing epics in, like, the 30s and the 40s, like, Gone with the Wind and Wizard of Oz. Like, like they, they were able to pull it though. off. Not action-y. I'm not talking about action. I'm talking about, like, production value. Like, oh, yeah. like the sets or costumes or whatever. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. like, and also just, like, filmmaking techniques. Like, like there was good stuff happening in this era. It was just that this was not one of those things. This was not designed to be cinema. It was meant to be something you would go see and you're, like, nine years old. And you just yeah. have nothing to do. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, like, a classic film versus... TV situation, you know, it's it's spread out more. So. Exactly. So you gotta like each episode has to have like less, per, like less money per chapter. Yeah. Because there, it has to be spread out over essentially four hours, as opposed to like a movie which maybe would be like eighty minutes or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So let me talk about some basic info here. So, um, in terms of like the credits for this, there's actually a little bit more intrigue here than the last one. So the direct it was directed by Spencer Gordon Bennett. Who directed a Superman serial the year before? Ah. Um, and I believe I had never seen like with this. I've never seen any of these serials. I I have heard of them mm-hmm. before, um, especially since I think a few of them featured George Reeves as Superman, mm-hmm. who would then go on to play Superman iconically in the TV show we talked about last week. Also, yep. correction, I had said that he jumped out of a window, um, to kill himself, um. <laughs> I think that was just a myth. This, he he did kill himself, but I think, well, he was found with gun sh- he, with a gunshot wound. Th- this is what you're correcting. Yeah, this is the thing I was listening to. <laughs> I, I, I I read this the other day and was like, oh shit! Like, <laughs> what, no, what? What is there other stuff I've been wrong about that I should be correcting? <laughs> just just seems silly of all the things. This is how he actually killed himself. <laughs> well, no, it's a big, it's a big thing. Why is it a thing? Because it was very mysterious. Because like there was no like, like I guess like they can check like for the fingerprints on the like, the bullet or like the discharge. Like yeah, it, it was very dubious. Some people think that maybe he had some ties with the like with the mafia, like the local, mo- not the, not necessarily Italians, but like, I mean, I mean Italians are all legitimate businessmen. So I don't even know what I just said, but could be if um, there was no like gunpowder. They think it might have been a a, a gangland violence basically like he pissed someone off and but but no one quite it, it, it's one of Hollywood's like biggest mysteries still to this day yeah. that's why I'm correcting because it's like a big deal like how he it's like, like the, his, his, his murder or death yeah it's like depending the, on how you look at thing. it oh what was it someone was on a building or something mm-hmm. but that I I'm pretty sure that's how Michael Jordan's dad got shot is just like t- just ran with the wrong crowd and then well he had a lot of gambling debts but yeah that's like yeah. the thing yeah um, but anyway, but that's kind of a tangent. But I'm saying the director of this also directed one of those Superman serials. So like, yeah. you start to see like this cohesion of like super. I guess so. Superheroes. Um, it was written by George H. Plimpton, Royal K. Cole, <laughs> and Joseph F. Poland, who also wrote that <laughs> Superman serial. Why did you say it like that? Plimpton. <laughs> Plimpton. I don't know. It's like it's like I want to say Plumpton. <laughs> um, it was produced by Sam Katzman. I have no idea who that is. Uh, distributed once again by Columbia Pictures. And p- after this, it's all going to be Warner Brothers, right? Because I think at a certain point, Warner Brothers gets like the rights to. This be was made in Columbia. No, that's with an O. This is a U. <laughs> um, and it was released. Um, I know at least the first one came out in May of 1949, but presumably 15 weeks of it. So yeah, probably it's went until. Probably went into September. We talked about this last yeah. time. Yes, the summertime. Um, we don't really need to talk about previous experience with the film because neither of us have ever seen it and didn't really know about it until this project. So nope, I don't know why. Why did you add these? Add what? Why did you add these to the roster? We talked about this last time. Oh, I forgot. Because it's <laughs> it's a it counts by our criteria. <laughs> It counts. I know, but the nobody's seen it. I don't. I don't care. Maybe they'll see it after we talk about it. That's true. That's it's true. Not, we're not. We're not doing. This isn't the show where we pick and go through some installments. We go through every single installment. 
the good and the bad and, and the ugly and the ugly and the not, racist not the film with with what's his buns but the the what the, the film with what's his buns ben affleck what are you talking no, about the good the bad and the ugly oh i thought you were making a joke because we're skipping the ben affleck ones no. Because it's part of like its own shared oh, thing. Oh, that would be funny. But no. oh, you you didn't think it. I I thought of my own dig at myself. Who, who is that man? Robert? No. John? No. Clint Eastwood? Clint? Yes. Clint. Robert? John? I was like John. all of the generic names. No, no, I was looking at Robert Redford, John Wayne. Oh. Because I'm looking at a picture of John Wayne right now. Anyways. Why? Where's John? Oh, our we have a DVD on the on the, on the shelf. Um. Um. Anyways. So not that movie, but the epithet that it's based off of. Or is it epithet? Or is it epithet? I think it's pronounced epithet, but I don't... That Ep- word has always Ep- eluded me Prothean? in terms of its... I've heard something else, too. Apothean? Apotherian? So in terms of the production on the film, <laughs> as usual on a Katzman production, so I guess this dude who produced it like produced a lot of different kinds of cereals. As usual, the low budget showed everywhere in money-saving shortcuts and inadequacies. So for example, the Batman costume had a poorly fitting cowl. Um, better or worse than the last one, though? I can't remember. Would you say that? Would you say this cow? The, the cowl is like the, like the headpiece, like the like the hood, kind of oh, like with the ears and like the, the nose. I, like I that. guess it it was more structured, but they were not bat ears. They were just like they weren't as floppy, but they were almost cartoonishly were like, more pointy. Yeah, they were like really pointy and like like kind of like devilly almost. Yeah, but like emoji devil, not like like ho- like yes. curved devil, yes. like. Like um, Hellboy, but like it was just kind of silly. <laughs> it looked silly. Oh, and his nose was really pointy. His nose was very. It pointy. was so pointy. He looked like a little gnat, or like, <laughs> or like a mosquito. He looked like almost like a comic, like like literally taken from a comic book page. Like that's like what a character's nose would look like in a comic book. <laughs> he he reminds know? me of like of like the bugs from A Bug's Life. You know, like the older ant. He has like a very pointy head or something, like very pointy nose. I don't know, just that animation style. But this is real life, so it's real life, yeah. Life imitating art. Yeah. So, so the costume was still, <clears throat> like Viviana referenced before. You know, the, the, it um, takes a lot of money to really realize Batman on screen. Yes, and this one also. So in the last one, the cape was not a big deal. <laughs> It was not that big of a deal. It was, you know, just kind of what you would think it would be, just kind of there. This one, he kept his punches kept getting caught in his in his cape, and it kept it was go, far going too big going all over the place and getting wrapped up. It was also more like Dracula, <laughs> right? Where if he was just standing, like the cape would just kind of like surround his whole. Body. It, yeah, it just was like, it was very large. <laughs> Um, and um, in addition to like to that costume not being great, so it, um, for Robin they added pink tights, which like doesn't matter because it's black and white. And I don't know why pink. <laughs> Though may, this may have been colorized later, like oh. they, sometimes they did. But I, I figured we would want to watch like the authentic black and white sure, one. Sure. Um, the reason was to cover the actor's hairy legs because for <laughs> unlike the last one where Robin was played by a literal boy, a literal boy. This 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 is um, a a stunt man. And yeah. the stunt man, yeah, you could tell like he had hairy legs sometimes, or or like you could just tell like, cause cause this Robin has a very distinctive is, hair. Is the style. guy is the guy a stunt person too? Or are you saying? No, I'm saying like like the like, stunt person and the actor. and the actor. Okay, yeah, okay. it was different. But the the Robin, the actor who plays Robin in this, has a very distinct like he has very curly hair. Yeah, yeah. And in one of the fight scenes, the actor, the stunt double for Robin. It was like a completely different hairstyle. <laughs> like completely. And I'm usually not one of those nitpicky, even though d- despite what you may Just think listening to the when, show. When you see it, you can see it. Like I'm usually not super nitpicky about like continuity errors like yeah. that. Yeah. I- I'm nitpicky about like story continuity errors Mm -hmm. but like just like within a scene like oh the cup was here and then it was i never care about that kind of stuff (laughs) oh i notice that stuff all the time (laughs) i well luckily i i have trouble notice i have trouble noticing those things in general but my point is if i notice that then it's a problem if i notice (laughs) something like that then it's a problem except for game of thrones that was the one thing i did not know oh the coffee cup unless unless it was re-edited for the hbo it could uh, very well uh, have been app it could very well. I did not watch it on no, TV. No, you watched it like years later. Yeah. So 
It, it's it, very possible it they edited, edited it out. out because I was definitely looking out for it. So that's definitely. I think I remember hearing like I haven't been really following Stranger Thing, Stranger Things, but oh, did it happen? I again? guess this <laughs> did what happen again? Uh, something like that. No, no, no. Just they, they, they released. You know, I don't think they released the whole season at once. Like maybe they did like four episodes, like whatever. Like, kind of uh, like um, like the circle. Yes, yes, do, like, yes. In bunches. And I think, like, the VFX were, like, 90% there. Mm -hmm. Like, all of the effects were in there. But, like, it just didn't look 100. So they, like, then re-uploaded it. (laughs) Once it was ready. Like, it wasn't ready completely in time. (laughs) It's like if I was baking a cake and, like, there was still 10 minutes left for it to cook. Yeah. I took it out. We had a slice. And then I put it back in the oven (laughs) to finish cooking for about 10 minutes and then take it back out. Um, Oh, it was, like, out for a while. Okay, yeah. Or whatever it was, you know what I mean? Um, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, and silly. once again in this, um, the Batmobile is excluded, even though it was in the comics by this point. Um, yeah, very it's much just so. the car. Um, instead of, but instead of a lim- limousine, as in like the last one, it, the duo drive around in a 1949 Mercury. Okay. Um, so... And they... <laughs> what? <laughs> they knew. The people... The people knew, like, it was so comically close to having his identity, like, blown so many times that it, and and sometimes, at, at times, you know? Mm-hmm. But it was just like, like, did you, you don't even think to change the license plate or anything? It's just like, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm just borrowing my friend Bruce Wayne's car. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> they notice. <laughs> we notice. <Yeah>. They notice. <laughs> Again, at least I've said this before. At least with Batman, he has like a, a something obscuring his face. Yeah. And in many versions, he's like doing a different voice. Yeah. Superman. It's literally just him. Yeah. With glasses. Though, though I've always... Ar- I feel like we're talking a lot about Superman <laughs> in this episode. <laughs> we gotta do Superman eventually. But of course, of what course. I was gonna say is my argument has always been that, like, people are like, oh, it's so silly. Like, I'm actually gonna contradict myself here. And people are like, oh, it's so silly. Like, it's just like a pair no, of glasses, people whatever. People look different, but like... But I'm saying, like, if someone worked in your different. office <laughs> that, like, kind of looked like Kim Kardashian, mm. you wouldn't be like... I think they're secretly Kim Kardashian. No, it just you would just be like, that's a weird... Because you had never seen Kim Kardashian in person. That's true, that's true. You just see pictures of her, right? Well, but no, if you saw I mean, this person and, and her saved. hair was done differently, her gla- she had some, glasses some on... Some people get saved by him, though. They've been up close. No, but do you see what I'm saying, though? His musk. That I think there's plenty of... The amount of celebrities who, like, go to conventions and aren't noticed proves that Superman... That, that would totally work in real life. Especially yeah. in the 30s. No, yeah, yeah. When, like, the best you would maybe get is, like, some grainy black and white photo. (laughs) Like, absolutely. The the, the glasses thing totally would have worked. Yeah. But Batman doesn't have to worry about that. Because he has, like, a full-on, like, like the cowl, the mat, like, you know. If if he had a very distinct butt chin, then he might be noticed, but. Anyway. Or just Um, any chin, I suppose. Usually his chin is visible, no? No, I know. That's what I'm saying. If he, if he, like had uh, well it depends on the mask specific because specific beard or something then they p- people could notice yeah. at least the similarities it depends on which batman we're talking about like which film version because like there's no full mask is there well oh. in christopher nolan's yeah it, like i think it goes around his whole face and there's like an opening for his oh, mouth oh but there's like eyes. a big opening yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. but i'm saying you wouldn't be able to see his his butt chin if he even if he had one. Oh, it covers his chin i think i now I'm like not sure. I don't think no, so. No, that wouldn't be practical. Hold on, Christian Bale, Batman. But I thought, oh, I thought that was like one of the whole things though, was that like the costume wasn't practical, and so like. Oh wait, no, you you do kind of see his he chin. He couldn't like turn his head. Well, that's something. the that's the thing is in many versions, like the the ones from the '80s. Yeah, he can't like turn his neck basically. So he's like, well, if he turns to someone, he has to like turn his whole body. Yeah, yeah. Over. Um. <laughs> But let's, why don't we talk about, let's talk about this. Let's, okay. let's dive in. So I just like to point out, so unlike the last one, which just had like title cards, these, these opening credits for each one has them like running on, like kind of like in a void of some kind, <laughs> just like looking around like, hmm, where's, where is some crime? You know, we get stuff. so confused. <laughs> um, so I thought that was always kind of a funny, um, it, it was, it's kind of goofy. Um, but here's, here's my big 
note about this. It's still fine. It's it's still boring. It still has all the same problems as the last one, minus the racism. But I thought it was fun. But well, I'm about to I'm about to say, but it's so much more visually interesting. Um, like there's actually like. In some semi-interesting camera work happening, like they'll push in, and I'm so starved from the last one where it was just like <laughs> camera on tripod, boring medium shots, and that was it. Mm-hmm. Whereas this, like, there are push-ins. There's like interesting angles and editing. Sometimes editing choices, right? Um, like I, I remember the very opening of the first one. Like, there's like this hectic opening like where it's like crime has riddled and it's like <laughs> lots of quick cuts and interesting camera movements and angles and yeah and i guess it's th- did, there's not as much to do for the sorry what do they do for the the newspapers how would they do that effect i don't know that's a good yeah. question like back I mean, in the 40s you know like when they come up and they're, like they're spinning it's like yeah. different different things that's a good question i don't know i think maybe they just spun it for real but not that fast and then sped it up I would, that is a good question. Like, with, with like, how do they do that special effect? Because that, that's it, in movie. That's been in movies forever. Because it's not, yeah. Because, it, but it's not the whole screen, so it wouldn't be just like one shot. So there had to be some type so, of some kind mixing of composite or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but th- there's not as much that you can politically draw from from this one like you can with the last one. No, this one's much but, better. This but, one is this is one is more story like. Th- this one's more just like like this Well, here's the the last one isn't really trying to be political. It's just like we have to talk about it in those in those no, terms. Whereas this it, one doesn't really have any of that. The the most the I could last say is one like was like a recruitment bill. Oh, like, yeah, it's political <laughs> in that sense. I'm saying like well, what I'm saying is this one doesn't really have any of that. But the the I did write down like a note like like if you were to like is there something to be said about like the post-war anxiety of urban living and like cities becoming crime ridden and that contributing to white flight? Because the opening is like makes it seem like living in the city is the most dangerous thing you could do in your entire life. It's like crime everywhere. No, no, yeah, yeah, there was. Yeah. So, but that's a stretch, even from Alamed. That, that's a stretch. I don't know about all that. I, it was just, it was just a story. You know, there's always crime in Gotham. It's a really troubled town. It is a troubled. We town. know that. You know, there, there's always crime. There's people getting stood up, in, uh, coming out of the opera. You know, mm-hmm. getting shot. People falling in wells with bats and shit like that. Ugh. A random British man being a butler. There's lots of things going on in Gotham. It's, all, it's, it's more than meets the eye. You know, so, so that's why Batman's like, hey, I may not be a community organizer, but I can be a community organizer. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> so he's like cleaning up the city, helping helping the crime, not yes, with the crime. With, with but no help, due process helping, for any of the people helping that he to clean up, up the crime. <laughs> yes, I don't understand how he's never been arrested for assault or anything like that. Just... Like sued by the people Sim- that beat him up, like. Or because what if he gets it wrong? Like what if he thinks the- this? What if he racially profiles somebody? <laughs> or, or simply and they, like and they, and they the didn't cops. do anything wrong and they- like sim- just the cops watching this man beat up another man. Well, again, that's something that is going to be interesting to track as we go through this franchise. Is is Batman's relationship with the police, right? So, like, in some very versions, he's very antagonistic, right? Intriguing. But sometimes he's kind of like an unofficial partner. Like in the in the Matt Reeves one, the Robert Pattinson one. Yes. Like he'll literally be brought into crime. Like it was very different He's been for the brought movies. Brought in like, for like questioning and stuff, right? Maybe. Am I making that? Up? But no, I'm saying like one of the earlier scenes. Like it's spoiler alert for that movie. But well, I won't say who. But someone gets murdered, and all of the police and crime scene people are there, and that man just strolls in. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, with the Christopher Nolan ones, it was always, like, he appears, like, they don't summon him. Like, he just, like, comes and it's usually just, like, Commissioner Gordon. Yeah. Right? Whereas <laughs> whereas in that movie, like, he's very much tag-teaming with the police working in tandem. Yeah. Um, but it depends. Same, same here. He, like... But he's always been meant to be, like, a vigilante, but he's a vigilante that they'll tolerate because, like, yeah. they're, he's able to do, again, because he doesn't have the constraints of, like, the Constitution. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know? And... I, and, and There'll be something we're going to talk about a lot more when we get into, like... Because the Nolan films, the Christopher Nolan ones... Yes. The first two, at least, 
are very much crime dramas. Like they they very much transcend the the superhero tapestry. The, the, the like the thirties. Yeah. So it's like like I'm not Noir. trying to make every single one of these like political discussions, but like yeah. quit we, it. No, but we're not gonna be able. But of, of all of these. We're gonna have to kind of talk about that with with Batman Begins and the Dark Knight because there's so much about because they're so grounded in reality well, ones, and modern the, crime the, and modern cities. Yeah, the new ones are more modern related, whereas this is I feel like this is just like an any time. This one just has the unspoken assumptions of like the police is like, you know, like are always the good guys and like even if you don't even if you're not like an A cab person, right? Like you, like there's a reason why so many stories like Serpico have been told, right? Where it's like mm-hmm. Al Pacino plays like the one good cop who's trying to break down like all the corrupt cops, right? Yeah. It, because that's because that's true. That that, yeah. that exists. Yeah. Not um, even if you don't even think in, all in of Renfield. all cops are are in, bad. In like Renfield. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like even if you don't think all cops are bad, like you have to admit, like that has been a problem, right? So no, it's yeah. it's just something like. But at this period in the 40s. That was it. Was their, their sincerity and, and moral integrity was unquestioned, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's you know, so if like Commissioner Gordon or a police officers there, like there's never gonna be any kind of intrigue. Whereas like the later films, like you never know who you could trust. Like yeah, that's that, baked into the story. That's like Gordon's whole thing. Is yeah, he's like the one guy he, he is, knows he can yeah trust. he can't like talk to anyone like uncorruptible in his, in his department or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So but my question, okay, cops or cops. My question is why everyone is fine with some random man being deeply involved in in crime and, and no one asks and, why is he doing this <laughs> in real time like like no one just goes up to the station and it's like hey so what's going on with this were you able to catch him oh, okay cool like you know I can I can help you out they're like oh thanks Batman no not Batman. Bruce! Oh. oh! Why the fuck is Bruce just hanging around the damn police station? And they're like, oh, I gotta go, I gotta call Bruce. I gotta give him an update. I'm like, the fuck does he care? And then Bruce will be like, oh, like, like this might, Bruce will say to him like, oh, you know, Batman I'm sure can help you. Yeah, it's like, let me call my friend Batman. <laughs> but it's funny because him and Robin will talk like in the third person. Like they'll they be do. like, because they'll be like, but we like we we can't do that. It's like we may maybe we can, but Batman and Robin can. Let's go. <laughs> and like no ordinary man could do that. No, no ordinary man could. But, but Batman, Batman Robin and Robin ordinary. could. Yeah. Or Batman and Robin. They're on the case. They're, yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, don't worry. I think Batman and Robin can solve this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but this one, this so this film compared to the last one, again, it's still very cheap, but it does have like a, it does, at least to my eye, has a higher production value. Like, I feel like there's more interesting, like, locations and schemes and stuff. Like, literally have that, that bomb that goes off near the safe. Yes. <laughs> right? Like, I think like with the wizard, like his all this like tech so it's like and it, it necessitates a... more. Whereas before, I don't think there was any really. There was really any tech. It was just like, we're dudes going to steal radium. No, yeah, and there's 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 just like a lot more in general. So there's a uh, when they fell into the harbor, and there they there was like oil on the water, and they like you know started a fire mm-hmm. and then there was like the the submarine set then there's like the the what's it called the they had the plane the well there's the plane yeah oh yes there's the plane and there was an actual like bungee shop jump or bungee jump shot there was a there was a one looking up uh-huh. so they had to be up somehow, right? Hmm. Either in a plane or, or you know, free falling, like whatever. So that there, there's some money, and then, <laughs> and then the fire, and then what else? Then um, the what is it called? The lair, not the bat cave, the the wizard's lair, and. I don't know. Then there, then he had a little submarine, which I liked because there was like the little. Toy. It was a miniature, so like <laughs> you could kind of see like yeah, the scale of it, so like miniature. it looked like a toy. It well, it was clearly uh, like a toy, just like bobbing on the water. It was funny, 
No, but then there was the inside of the submarine. Then there's his house. Then there's the bat cave. Then there's the safe. And then there's commission the Gordons. Commission of the Gordon. <laughs> so well, that's then, another thing. So we actually have Commissioner Gordon. Yes. In yes. this, um, because the last time it was just like it was. Basically Commissioner Gordon, but just he had a different name yeah. for some reason. Oh, um, and then the scientist's house, and then all the all the tech and stuff. So there there was lots of stuff. This one's a lot more... There's lots of stuff to this one. I, I applaud this one because it's, like, a lot more... Um, c- complicated is the wrong word, but, like, it, it's, like... There's, like, more intrigue. Like, like there's more kind of, like, angles. Like, like, we were getting kind of invested trying to find out, figure out, like, who the wizard was. Whereas the last one, it's no, very much yeah. just, like... They want to get the radium. They try Batman stops them, and then they try again Batman. Stops them. Whereas this one, it felt like <laughs> it still didn't feel like one story. It still felt like these like really choppy fifteen parts. But it was more it, cohesive. It, it was a little more cohesive. It was more cohesive. I there was there was important plot lines that were carrying over, right? So we introduced yes. that Vicky's brother Jimmy is working with them. A scandal. And then, they, and then they follow it up later, like. Like, that was a scandal. Like, that felt a little bit more cohesive. But some of it was kind of silly, though, the way they tied it together, like, with Jim, with Jimmy. Like, mm-hmm. that didn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, so, so in, in case you haven't seen this, so, so, so the love interest in this is Vicky Vale, um, who, who was from the comics. Yes, yes, we established. She's kind of like a, she's kind of like a Lois Lane type. She's, she's like a Yeah, reporter. she's a, like, photographer, reporter kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. And um, her brother has kind of gotten mixed up in this, in the wizard's He's a goon. He's a goon, basically. But at some point, he realizes Batman is Bruce Wayne, and he's like, feels bad about what he's done, so he... They never explain it. No, it's like... He, he like, is like, basically to make up for what he's done, he like, pretends to be Batman to like, give Bruce time to escape. He was knocked out. It doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. No, it was like he was. And like, they reuse shots from the last one of him falling out of the building. It was the same shot of him fall of, of him <laughs> free in free fall. I recognized it because it was so ridiculous the first time. <laughs> it was imprinted in my brain. <laughs> well, it was like a classic kind of like you know the teetering on the line type of thing. They you know he had been with them and bad right, but then he's like oh. You know, they're not the nicest guys, and I want them to protect Vicky because she's my sister, you know. But, you know, like, I'll still go along with it. And then, like, you know, but they kidnap her, and then they're kind of roughing her up and stuff. And so he's like, wait, no, you can't. And so there's kind of, like, that weird, like, okay, you're either with us or you're against us. And because you're, like, not fully with us, even roughing up your sister, like... You're against us, basically, right? Yeah. So, so that was that, and then you know they. Yeah. So it's not done well, but be- it's like something. It's something. Basically, it's kind of interesting. Basically, yeah. for whatever unknown reason, it's not. It's ex- it, they say, but it's not well explained. Basically, Batman gets knocked out. Jimmy lifts up his mask, sees he's Batman, takes him into like a closet or like a room or something. Swi- him switches down. clothes and pretends to be Batman and then I guess is like fighting the his friends now or his ex friends now because he feels As Batman. because he feels guilty. And then but then he's like trying, out of a window. trying to like yeah, make up for you know they said like trying to make things right, right? Yeah. And then I guess <laughs> he gets pushed out of a window. But you would think like, oh, like in the last one, he gets on He'll the, like land like, on like a on the like a painter's thing, right? Or or there was like a a truck in the way, so I was like, oh, there's got to be like a laundry basket or something behind there. No, oh. he, he just straight up dies. But I guess it makes sense because he's the only one to know, like, confirm that Bruce. Yeah, is I guess we. Batman. That's a loose end. We but can't it, have. but it was just so like, w- Vicky doesn't know about her brother yet. We should go help her. And and, like, and huh? is there ever a scene where they tell Vicky? Oh shit, no. They they completely. I was expecting it to come back later, where it was like he wasn't actually dead. Like I was expecting it to come back. He so and, he has multiple costumes. I don't. I guess so. In case one like gets well, one for every day of the week. Well, I guess. So. Well, he gets all bloody one night. If he's, on Wednesday, he still gotta go out Thursday. He doesn't want to have blood all over him. 
I guess that's true. You Unless he's trying to be scared. Gotta do laundry. So uh, does, is is Alfred the only one to to wash these things? I would assume. Maybe, yeah. Anyway. Do you think they do dry cleaning or tumble? <laughs> I don't think they could take it to the dry cleaners. We're like, um, it's my cosplay. If you did a modern my day cosplay. version, it would be like, it's like my cosplay. <laughs> but now, but now, now, like in modern movies, they're like armor almost yeah. more than like more than like cl- which clothes. Makes, which makes sense because the people are shooting at him all the time. Yeah. But um, that was funny. So now there's a dead guy in his suit. In, in he's not getting one. that one back. He's not getting Tuesday back. I don't know. He's not getting his Tuesday outfit back. He's going to have to that, switch that, up the that was like, It seemed intense. I mean, I know they're fighting and stuff, but they're just like getting bonked on the head. He fucking smacks onto just the like, pavement. Well, at first right I thought you, I, I thought you were right where like, oh, he must have fallen into something. Because there, no, there was no... There was no impact noise yeah and he the, falls and the, behind a truck yeah behind the truck and so I, I was like oh you know like the big like industrial laundry baskets like i was like oh he probably just fell in one of those and then he's like, <laughs> and then he comes out and explains it to robin and we're like huh <laughs> he's just like oh yes blah blah blah, blah. What? and then robin's like sure thing batman and i was just like wait wait, wait. <laughs> like, oh, speak, speaking of Robin, <laughs> hold on. Speaking of Robin, I I am not really a fan of this Robin. The the last one was really annoying, and it seemed so weird that him and Batman were getting naked together in the back of that car. <laughs> but this Robin, like, literally, just looks like he was like someone's like like lover, and he was just like cast in the movie. He was just cast in the movie because he's just like he was kind of flat. He was very flat, and you know who else was kind of flat? Bruce. And then yeah. They really play him like when he is Bruce, when he's Batman. I would say like this one has a better Batman, but the last one had a better Bruce. Because mm. the last mm. Bruce like was a little kind of playful and kind of tongue in cheek and and kind of like snarky. This, this one, whereas this one, his, his whole, whole vibe thing is he's sleepy. Yeah, the, his whole thing is like Bruce Wayne is like couldn't be Batman because he like doesn't care about anything. So he's like <laughs> he's, he plays him very disaffected. He's so like. tired from being all out all night partying. Ugh, he couldn't mm. possibly be involved. Yeah, exactly. Honestly, same Bruce. He just looks tired. like he just kind of looked like bored the whole time. And I was like, <laughs> bro, if you're bored, I'm bored. Like, <laughs> like if you're not into this, why am I gonna be into this? We're just a group of sleepy p- gals. You and Bruce Wayne? Yes, we're just sleeping. Oh well, he goes partying. I just, I, but, but I'm you, sleeping. You know who was better in this than I think the last one? What? Alfred. I thought this was a much better Alfred. Really? Yeah, because, well, here's the thing. Is, in terms of, like, delightfulness, yeah, the last one was. Because the last one was just, like, this, like, squirrely, like... I did find him delightful. He was very, like, goofy. Yeah. But in terms of, like, what I would want Alfred to be, this yeah. one's, like, this one kind of, like, in my mind matches. Yeah. Like, like what's, what I like about Alfred in all of his incarnations is that, like, he... I think we talked about this last time. In the comics, I don't think at the start, like, when they first created the character, but later down in the comics, I think they fleshed out his backstory that he was, like, a secret agent. Like the what? British version of like the CIA, like MI6 the or whatever. MI6 or whatever, yeah. Or something like that. MI6. Right? Yeah. Um So I think with that in mind, like I always like the idea that Alfred's like a sweetheart, but like if you were to try to like come at him, like he could defend for himself. Mm-hmm. Right? And he just has like this like com- like this collectedness about him. Mm-hmm. Because he's like, I'm always in control of every situation. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like no one's ever gonna get the jump on me, kinda, mm-hmm. right? Where so the one in the last one was just like, oh, Master Bruce, I don't know what. Like, he was just like all over the place. So, <laughs> he was silly. He was. Remember, he was shooting the gun. And he was like, did I get him? Did yeah. I get him? <laughs> That's the thing. But I will say, though, I did like him being more involved in the he, story yeah, last he one. Because he's barely be, in this one. He wants to be involved. And, like, I, I think that's crazy because. You, he's already so involved. He's like a, he's like a permanent babysitter for Bruce, honestly. Yeah. But but like now he's getting involved with this this life of vigilantism and and crime and all this stuff. I'm like, oh, this poor man. I hope he's getting paid a lot. But I'm sure he had the, the, the tr- a trust from a trust fund, perhaps. Or... I suppose. But then, what's he spending his money on? Doesn't he live there? Maybe his know. trips maybe back cigars. to England. Yes, yeah, so maybe cigars. Cigars. Maybe a round of golf. <laughs> sure, <laughs> yes. And maybe some trips back to England to see his mum. Mm-hmm. 
And, and she's still alive. Sir, of course she's alive. Um, but this, I don't, was the bat signal in the last one? Or yes. is this the first time we were seeing? No, it was in the last one. The last. But it wasn't in the sky. It, it was just. It was just like they would do it on a wall or something, right? No. Like they would it, it do it. It was in the sky, I think, like once or twice. But it was. It. It looked silly. It looked like a. It kind of looked like a skirt or something. It looks silly in this one too. Yeah, but well, this one is a little bit more structured, like like the bottom part of the wings. But in the last one, it was kind of. It was like scalloped. So it oh just, yeah, <laughs> it looked kind of silly. Mm -hmm. Also, there, there's a. I just noticed there's a lot of things that weren't explained. Like, Come on, tell us, like what? What's up with the professor? So the professor. So here's here's no. They explain at the very end. So 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 I let know. me let me back up. So <laughs> let's back up because again, most people listening to this, I'm imagining you did not watch it. So so the main <laughs> villain of this is the wizard. Yes. And he's wearing like this black hood and he kind of looks like like the like the guys at the guillotine or the gallows, yes. right? That's what we said. Yes, that's what I told you, yeah. Um and he wants to control the city or whatever. So he he has stolen supposedly stolen um the Professor Hamill's uh like machine controlling yeah. machine. So like <laughs> if you can use it to control any machine or object really at all so but throughout yeah. the serial yeah. we're getting these hints that may we're getting these red herrings that that it's professor hamill who's the wizard yes because he's like in a wheelchair but then sometimes he'll go to like a thing and then like he'll like butts himself in this like electrical chair type and he'll be able thing, to get up yeah and then can walk and then goes into the secret but, doorway in his in his fireplace. But but I was like, no way! Like the voice is way different. The physical, the physicality is way different. And I and I called it early on. I said it was the butler. Okay. And I was I was right and wrong at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Because it turns out the wizard is the butler's twin brother. Evil. Evil twin brother <laughs> who has basically been like coercing Professor Hamill and the and the butler to help. Yes, do yes, this. yes. Um, so, so they do explain. Yeah, so the professor is that like basically... That doesn't explain how, the, the how getting he up part. zaps himself into getting up. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. And I then know. going into a, a door in the fireplace. Yeah. Well, I guess maybe he was going down to the thing. But that doesn't... What's up with the zapping? I think it was just a red... I think it was just to what's misdirect up, people. What's up with the zapping? What's the deal with zapping? The man was in a wheelchair. He had FDR legs, and all of a sudden he's <laughs> and all of a sudden he's walking. <sighs> I was surprised. And I yeah, was you, you know what else they didn't explain to, to uh, similar to that is like so yeah he does that, and then at some point Batman or someone else comes in who shouldn't see him walking around. And they don't say anything. And they don't say anything don't about say, it. Yes, yes, I did notice that. There was this one scene in particular. They were all in his office, and he was just up walking around. And no one said anything about it. But it wasn't like, it wasn't like, oh, he's just, like, tired, or, like... like they made it very clear. It's like he can barely walk on his own. Yeah, and then, like, when he, when he like, lifts himself up to get to the other chair, like... It's like he, he doesn't have full use of his legs. So it's not just like, you know, an old person or someone needing like one of those little scooter things at Walmart, you know, yeah. like it, it's not just to conserve energy. It's because he can't walk. So it's like. So when he gets up, it should be a bigger deal. Like, he's Professor off. Hamill, <laughs> what are you doing up? <laughs> like, that's a scientific miracle. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, um, but yeah, so. There's there's lots of kind of misdirects. Um, speaking of misdirects, it, it's just like the last one. It employs lots of deceptive cliffhangers, where it'll just like so straight up lie. Twisty. It'll just oh, lie. Oh yeah, the lie. Just, it'll just lie. Like <laughs> yeah. they'll show something happen and then it'll just happen <laughs> differently at the beginning of the next one. <laughs> like the car will go off a cliff and you're like, and oh no! Explode. Yeah, it'll like explode. How are they gonna get out of this one? It's like, oh, luckily they rolled out just in time. Just in time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I wasn't even phased at that point. <laughs> yeah, but but um, but no, I really do like the wizard. Um, because he's really funny. <laughs> 
like unintentionally because sometimes yeah. he'll be like well the thing about like the last one and like uh he wasn't a professor. Professor Daka? Like, the, the no, villain from the last one. No, he was, like, a political guy, right? Maybe. maybe I don't even know. But, but like, very obviously, very racist portrayal, right? But almost worse, he was just boring. Like, it wasn't even like a, <laughs> this is so racist and ridiculous, it's kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just boring. Whereas this, like, like the way he, de- like the wizard, the way he delivers his lines. Because they, because he tries to, they try to fake you out to think it's Hamlin. And Ham- Hamill. And Hamill. And Hamill's, like, crabby. So, yeah. so when the goons are, like, talking to him or whatever, like, like the He'll be, like, wizard, all annoyed. And the, yeah, he'll be, like, super annoyed. And then they'll be like, well, what are we going to do? Like, do we have a plan? Do you have a plan? And he's like, I always have a plan. Yeah, because, like, because you numb nuts always <laughs> mess up my previous plans. And there was also like this very thin subplot of, oh, <laughs> of his beef. Like, I guess his number one guy was this guy named Nolan, but then Batman kept slipping from his clutches so many times that he replaced him with this man named Neil. But this is super like, <laughs> si- like not sad, like it's sad, but sad, like it's pathetically funny. It was where it's like, so silly. he's like, it's like Nolan's sitting at like the table with the mic communicating with oh. the wizard and his player right. and like the number two guys behind Nolan. And he's like, put on the other guy. And Nolan kind of just slowly gets up and they switch seats to talk and then Nolan's up. And then he just doesn't show up ever again. No, it just never. I don't know if he if he quits or if he gets killed by the wizard. No, I think he's in like one or two shots late. I don't know. He got demoted. <laughs> Poor Nolan. It was just really interesting because he was like, "Oh, we can't lose him again. The wizard's gonna be all that." And like it's this whole other like subplot. And then he was. <laughs> he's like, "You're useless." That was so silly. Um. And every time, of course, I hear the word the the name Neil. Course. I think of the stepdad from the Santa Claus and the weenie whistle, so you know. Oh, the other guy's name was Neil. Yeah, but you know the close talker guy from. Sonic yeah, no, Rome? yes, yes. Yeah, I don't know his name. But you're the saying actor. that you're saying that one of the characters in this is named Neil. That's what that's what I'm asking. Yeah, the the guy who replaces Nolan. Number two. Okay. Yeah, his name is Neil. Well, he's number th- three. two, and now or three. Yeah, number two, and now he's number one. But, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. weenie whistle. Yeah. <laughs> It was an Oscar Mayer weenie whistle. <laughs> um, but <laughs> thanks, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are great. Um, I love I love those movies, even the ones that aren't good. I love, I love those. Um, I invented chill. Oh, okay, not that one. That one's oh. that one's lame. Oh, well, that was a funny line reading. It was that was that was the one funny. Part. Or what is it? <laughs> That was for the second one where he makes the doll version of himself with the toy and he's like he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like the Terminator. <laughs> he's like he's like a uh, like yeah. a Barbie Terminator type thing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um but no the wizard is like really funny and fun. Like he's a really good villain for he's this kind of stuff. Funny, like because yeah. he's very extra. It's like if you're gonna do these serials and they're gonna be so campy and, and like low production value, just go big. Just like well, ham it up, right? Honestly, that's all I mean, honestly, that's all he could do. I mean, because, like, with DACA, right, he's just, like, a person and he's out. But, like, Mm -hmm. with, like, visually, not sexually. But with (laughs) with the wizard, he's just, like, covered in, like, cloaks. Like, he's got a full hood, a full, like, like, length cloak and everything. So all he's got is his grumpy personality and campiness to come off. Yeah. Or else he's just like a a black sheet with two holes in him for yeah. the eye. <laughs> yeah. Um but he had so he like some of his lines were just hilarious and the one I wrote down is a line that I feel like not only should more Batman villains say, but just like people in movies should say. I shall publicly defy him. <laughs> Talking about Batman, I shall publicly defy him. That was so I was—he said something like that. I was just like, "This is incredible." Um, but yeah, he's definitely a more interesting villain. Like I said, it, it, its like yeah. an actual mystery, no, like yeah. as opposed to the last one. Like, like I don't know if they know who Doc, is, but like, it, there's never a mystery. Whereas this, like, it, it actually like this actually justifies the episodic structure. I feel like because it's like yeah. with every chapter, the plot is thickening. We don't Where's know until, like, the last one, right? Like, 
No. It's very, yeah. That, well, that's why I say that these ones are kind of good because they're kind of twisty, you know? Mm-hmm. So, it's, it's they, de- they got me. It's definitely, like, I think it utilizes that structure a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but again, it's, it's, in some ways it's sillier than the last one. Yeah. I don't, but I don't know. I'm having trouble remembering fun both of these. Fun silly. Fun. It is fun silly. Um. I had fun watching it. But those are all my notes about the movie. Like, I don't really have a lot, <laughs> lot to say about it. Like. Lots happens. A lot happens. This is going to be oh, a shorter one for oh sure. Oh my goodness. But. It was so funny. They kept they kept chasing the bad guys, but they kept losing them at this cliff. They're like, where did they go? Like, did they, where did they go? Like, are they in the water? Where, how did they just disappear? And then they finally find the secret entrance. <laughs> it was like... It was this little cave, and it was blocked by a bush, and so it was yeah. inconspicuous. I bet that was really frustrating to the kids, where they'd be like, "It's almost like Dora like, the Explorer." It's right there. Yeah, like, like <laughs> look at the look behind the bush. <laughs> that's like the, that's the greatest when you were a kid. The catharsis of when they finally notice what you've been trying is like that's what I've been trying to tell you. It's like, Finally, you buffoon. <laughs> um, you didn't notice that before. But. Yeah, I mean, I think the la- our last episode was longer just because we were establishing, like, it was the first episode of the season, talking about Batman in general. Oh, yeah. And we also talked, like, about the political racist stuff for a, yeah, long, for a bit. Yeah. So this episode's definitely going to be shorter. Um, but if you're listening to you this, you can look know. down and see how long it's going to be, right? Because you can... always being meta. I think it's interesting. You, right now, listening. Yeah, you. Stop. Because <laughs> I'm going to listen, and then I'm not going to... That's going to... Be weird. And I'm gonna be sitting in the room with you right now. And hi, Peter, listening to Stop. this right now. Stop! Being I'm gonna pause. Here. I'm gonna pause for present day Peter to say hi. Hello to you too. <laughs> Stop it! You're doing that thing like in the in the Lego Movie when it's like the whole thing. This is like when you put two mirrors in front of each other, <laughs> it just like becomes like an infinite, <laughs> endless thing. Um, but. Yeah, overall, I think this is much better than the than the last one we watched. Um, not just because it's not racist. Like, even if this one was also racist, it's this fun. one would be better. It's better made. It's it's more I think, interesting. I think the the Vicky is is a little better. She still doesn't have like a very big role, which kind of yeah. stinks because like she seemed so involved in the beginning, but then like yeah. Like, <laughs> well, they like, kind of. They, one time, I was literally like, "Oh yeah, Vicky, she's in yeah." <laughs> they they give her a little bit more, not necessarily to do, but just more relevance to the plot about, like in the middle, like with all the stuff with her with brother. Because yeah. again, like it's it's like, is any of this Looking done really kidnapped. well? No, none of it's done really well. But it's like, okay, there's like there's something interesting there, right? So you have yeah. like this like web of relationships and connections all like well, she, centered around this mystery, right? So, yeah. Well, and she just I feel like she also had just like more personality too than the last Vicky because um I like the part when uh she was following them Batman and Robin in in her car. And first, I don't know how. So, somehow, like, she got their attention and um, he stopped her and was like, oh, we're going to go over here, um, but it's going to be too dangerous for you to come. And she's like, no, it's fine. She was like, he was like, no, I don't, I don't want you to get hurt. Like, <laughs> you know, whatever. And so he takes her keys. He's like, you're not coming. But then she has... A backup pair <laughs> so she goes anyway like you know so it just had a little bit more personality I think than than the last one mm-hmm. um but I mean if you're Peter you of course just think it's boring and whatever but I mean I thought I thought it was fun for what it is you know yeah. like there, there were some parts that were fun again I I think I liked this I, I'd be comfortable saying I liked it yeah but it's not something I'm like 
would be dying to go back and watch. By no, I probably minutes. will never watch these again. But it was not. I didn't want to like, for what it was stab my eye with a fork. No, yeah, that's it. For for what it was, I think even if if we had watched it all in one day, I still think it would have been better. Like I, I don't think we liked it more just because we split it up and like it wasn't like this huge thing like the last one was. No. Like I think even if we had done it in one day, we still would have. Like, I think it's just. I think it's just better made it, on every level. Um, yeah. Except for the except for the Batman and Robin, but, <laughs> like you know. And I just... think I think we also earn kind of know what to expect in terms of the structure and can kind of like see where some things are going. Like for this one, I. You know, I made some guesses, right? Obviously, I was wrong about the laundry cart. But, you know, for the for the submarine, I was like, it would be very suspicious if the wizard, who I thought was Hamlin at the time, lived Hamel? on it. Hamel. Are you saying Hamlin? <laughs> I think I know someone. I don't know. Or maybe I've seen that. Oh, wait. Isn't, uh, what's his name? Something Hamlin... The guy with the heart, he died, and then he came back. What's the his name? The guy with the heart. And he Christmas, died. his heart stopped. The Grinch? No, the football player. Oh, Damar Ham Hamlin. Dem- yeah. Yes, Damar. Anyways, what's his name? Hamlet. Hamel. Hamel. Okay, like Mark. Okay. Yes. Okay. Anyways. It's spelled differently, but yes. Anyways, so. I was like, that would be very suspicious if he lived on an island because they have to take a submarine to get to the headquarters, right, or whatever, which presumably would be in his basement just like, it, you know, Bruce's back cave would be, right? But uh, <laughs> I was like, well, wouldn't it be funny if they just, like, went out and circled around and came back? And I was just like, ha, ha, ha. And then a few episodes later, they were like, Oh, Dr. Hamill's right. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Hamill's house is is on the cliffs like by the water. We should go see, you know. And then they reveal at the end that they did do that. So silly. <laughs> but anyways, and also like how like oh, how you know is the episode over yet or no you know like he has to be in a troubling situation and then it'll go like the doom and then <laughs> there's there's a comfort in the structure yeah where it's like you know what you're gonna get each episode like you're not you know well you don't know what you're gonna get but i mean in terms of you like know you know it's gonna, gonna be exciting you know how you're gonna get it yeah you know <laughs> let me tell you i was not expecting an evil twin brother. That was some telenovela shit right that there. That was really, like, <laughs> last second. Like, no foreshadowing at all. Like, it's not even like the butler mentioned the twin brother at nope. any point. Or, or any fa- Like, it literally just, like, the last, like, oh. We. Because, well, here's the thing is that at some point, it's like they find the butler's fingerprints. Yes. Yes. And it's like, but he couldn't have been there. So it's like, how is that possible? And it's like. I thought it was just because it was his butler and, you know, he's probably touched his gloves before right like, butler buttles what is, buttles i don't know anywho but no yeah and like we we only see what's his name kevin no calvin <laughs> what's his name oh the butler's name something it was um hold on uh anyways we only see that uh, we only see that guy like like carter carter yes um, we only see him like like three or four times, mm-hmm. and it's like just while while Mark Hamill, while while <laughs> while Hamill is telling him to get out of his office so that he can go zap himself in the chair and get up, and he's, we don't learn anything about him, and then all of a sudden it's like. Oh yeah, his extended family. He's got the villain, he's yeah. got his evil twin brother. <laughs> Not like, hey, but Carter's. I I wonder if they you know brother is staying with us. I I, I I wonder if when they would make serials like this, if they would film all of it all at once, like they had the whole script written and then just filmed all the parts, or if it's like. 
they were coming up with the finale like as they were make like you know what I mean like <laughs> I don't know that'd be a, that's a good question it, probably not though because it's like you you did cast Carter as the wizard like it, that is the same actor underneath so it's like no yeah so there must yeah. have been some force for like at least an outline yeah. yeah um <clears throat> but uh mm-hmm. no yeah I thought that was funny and um oh there was something I was gonna say oh he shoots his own brother he does shoot his Rude. own brother Rude. well that does such a good job of making it seem like Carter is not the well technically mm-hmm. Carter is not the wizard but like he is kind of but that is a good job of of faking us out because it's like because that's you start to suspect carter is the wizard because of the fingerprints yeah yeah. but then carter gets murdered yeah what's the brother's name i don't think they ever uh i think that's all they say is carter's brother yeah evil yeah the wizard carl's evil twin (laughs) you're looking at the cast the wikipedia yeah (laughs) Um, <laughs> Carl's evil twin. Carter. Oh, Carter. Carter and Hamill. Oh, you just said Carl. No, I said Carter. No, you said. I slurred a little, but no. I said Carter. Uh, stop being drunk. I did that. I'm not drunk. <laughs> I'm drunk on love, maybe. <laughs> That's right. I'll let. I don't care who knows it. Ew. Um, do I hear some trivia? Yes, of course. Okay. I want to tr- be trivial. You want to be trivialized? Don't trivialized. About to. If you don't read it, don't read it. I know. Okay. Vicky Vale was created in 1948, the year before the film. Artist Bob Kane, who like created Batman and all this mm-hmm. stuff, um, with a guy named Bill Finger. And yes, his name is Bill Finger. <laughs> um, artist Bob Kane based her on Marilyn Monroe, who he, who he met at a Hollywood party. Vicky was a common character to the Batman comics until 1963 when the editors cleaned house on Batman's list of regular co-stars. She made a print comeback in 1977 and has sporadically waxed and waned in importance in that medium as well as animated cartoons. Kim Basinger played her in Batman 1989. That's the Tim Burton one. Hmm. She's like the love interest. They kind of bring her back for that one. That's weird. Why would they... I think they just decided there was plenty of... He had plenty of other interesting characters like... That were also superhero-y. Like, you could have, like, Catwoman or Poison Ivy. Well, yeah, like, but those aren't love interests. It's like Catwoman is is oftentimes his, like, love interest in the comics. Oh, they like each other? A little, yeah. I mean, well, in The Dark Knight Rises, he goes off with Catwoman. In the uh, Robert Pattinson one, uh, him, him and... Ooh, him and Zoe Kravitz. Steaming up the screen. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Um. Well, it's just weird because they're not always together. Whereas, like, Lois Lane is, like, a staple she, yeah. for, for Superman. Yeah, Batman is, Batman never really had... I think because he has such a compelling list of villains, it's like... Mm-hmm. Like, with Superman, you need that larger, regular supporting cast. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, okay, Lex Luthor, Zod, Brainiac, and who else? Who cares, who cares about anyone else? So, like, right, it's like... Whereas mm-hmm. Batman, like, I could list ten Batman villains... And I would still leave out iconic ones. Do it. Do it right now. Oh, okay. Joker. One. Two-Face. Two. Uh, the Riddler. Three. The Penguin. Four. Uh, Catwoman sometimes. Uh, She's like an anti-hero uh, kind of. Um, Poison Ivy. Mm-hmm. Six. Killer Croc. Oh, seven. Um, maybe this is harder than I... <laughs> oh, Scarecrow. Okay. Bane. Okay, eight. Is uh, that a separate? Bane is, is separate, yeah. Okay, nine. So that's nine. Um, Raz Al Ghul. Ten. Liam Neeson. Ooh, yeah. Raz Al Ghul. Liam Neeson in Batman Begins. He's like the guy who trains him to be a ninja. He's bad? Yeah! Why are we trying to be the villain? Spoiler alert! Is that the one when he's in the prison... Yes, and Liam Meeson comes, wakes him up, and he's like, get up, you lazy sack of shit. Go be awesome. <laughs> um, shall I continue with trivia? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Um, if Robert Lowry, who is the actor for Batman, if, oh, excuse me, if Robert Lowry's Batman costume seems a bit ill-filling, it's because it was tailored for Kirk Allen, a bigger man. <laughs> Alan starred as Superman in the Superman serials uh, before George Reeves. Okay. And I guess maybe he was supposed to play Batman 
before first and then i guess it didn't happen um so lowry had a terrible time trying to see out of the poorly designed batman mask they so it was really tailored for another dude and they were just like nah you wear it they didn't retailer it i guess not <laughs> okay uh the titles of each chapter have little or nothing to do with what happens in them <laughs> The only possible noticed. <laughs> the only possible exception is chapter fifteen, Batman Victorious. Um, Robin's ruse. <laughs> yeah, Robin's Robin's wild ride, and I'll be like, what's that even mean? Um, but I will say they 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 would get me hyped up. I'd be like, oh man, Batman! The wizard strikes back. Yeah, that was one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and this this one goes without saying we've talked about it but I'll say it Batman's hometown of Gotham City has always been understood to be an over the top analog of New York uh, but due to the low budget Batman uh, the original serial and this one treat Gotham as an analog of Los Angeles yes um, precisely, precisely. Um, so let's talk about criti- the, the critical reception okay sure so um, at the time let's see do we do we have any I don't think there's any info on what people thought at the time um, but in terms of like modern reception on Letterbox is a 2.5 out of 5. I mean, one point higher than the last one. <laughs> or, or not one point, like a point one. It was 2.4. Any old people listening, let us know. Let us you, know. Let us know what you thought. And and continuing with our new tradition now, I'm going to read some some funny. Um, yeah. Don't read it. I can see you reading. Do you them. have a quote from Pube? Yeah, so use a Letterbox user Pube. <laughs> or is it Pube? Probably Pube. <laughs> Probably pube. Um, pube writes, if I were a time... <laughs> What's funnier, that or pube? <laughs> if I were a time traveler, I would go back to a showing of this in 1949 and play the Dark Knight instead <laughs> just to see what happens. Thank you, pube. <laughs> Thank you, pube. That was beautiful. Uh, Adolfo Acosta says, all the corniness of the 1966 television series, none of the self-awareness. And that's going to be something that's going to be fun to watch with those is like, they lean into it. Like, I don't know if it's from the movie or one of the episodes, but like, there's a scene where it's like a bomb's about to go off. So he's like, oh, I gotta get rid of this bomb. So it's like a three minute scene of him just running with the bomb trying to find a place to put the bomb. It's like, it like it knows it's dumb. And that, whereas this and the last one, like they, they it's dumb because like, they tried. That's what makes it funny. Like, yeah. Um, Fun with Films 98 says, quote, the second Batman serial puts more emphasis on action and adventure instead of political undertones. However, the dynamic duo don't have the same charm or charisma as before. I completely agree. Yes. Thank you, Fun with Films 98. Right? It's just like, I feel like they, the, the, the Bruce and the, like, better villain, worse Batman. Mm-hmm. Right? Hmm. Um, but... That kind of spoils my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> it's probably the wizard. Just and and I will I I shall publicly defy him. <laughs> um, but Viviana, favorite part, scene, character, actor, line. Um, the brawls were not as good in this one. I feel like no, they were not like as I, they weren't as <laughs> mayhem. Like I said, they he kept getting caught in his in his cape, and so it was funny, and it was like. He was like punching people through his cape, and it was yeah. It was just like this whole thing. Um, honestly, I don't know. What uh, do you mean you don't know? It was, it was swell. It was delightful, and I think there is some <laughs> some funny lines that we'll be adding to our lexicon. Um, so I would yeah, I would say the lines. The lines, the script. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Viviana, and one also out of, the twists and turns. The twists and turns. This had some good twists and turns. And also Vicky, she was she was. Okay. Um. Last time I checked, let me reread this. Oh yeah, favorite part singular. Yeah. Okay. That's what the notes say. So. <laughs> Fuck off. Um. So you're kind of you're kind of pushing. You the have literally said multiple things before. And then I I can go I back. self-flagellated afterwards. I, I was can. so upset. I would I would you, you know self flag no not flagellation. <laughs> Flagellation. <laughs> it's like the people in the medieval, oh, when, they would hit them, they, hit they, themselves yes. like for repent to repent. Yes, yes, like the guy from from the Da Vinci Code. Oof, oof, oof. Um. Okay, Viviana, are you ready to think about some numbers? Yes. Do you have your calculator? Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, okay. Boop, One out of ten. What are you What are you giving this movie? Um, what did I give the last one? You gave the last one a six, so it was like okay. Okay. Um. 
I think I'll also give this one a six, but I'm going to put that above the last That's what I was going to ask. Okay, so so this is still a six, but... Because I was going to say seven. Well, no, I wasn't going to say seven, but, like, I was like, I, I did like it more than the other one. Yeah, but, again, yeah. like like I've said before, it's like, for me, the, the points are, like, categories, right? So it's like... We've already established that. Oh, well, you know, you, you it's funny that you say we've established it, because so often you'll be like, wait, so what do you... What do you well, because I, I sometimes I want to see, I want to remember what yours is, even though I'm not going off of yours. Mm. It's just kind of, like, a gauge, mm. comparison, compare and contrast, okay. you know. I am also going to give, I am also going to give this a six. I think it's okay. I think it's a net positive, but again, it's not something I probably will ever revisit. 6.5! No, absolutely not. There's no point. This isn't a 20-point scale. There's no <laughs> half points. Um, and I'm also, by, because I gave the last one a 5, automatically this would go above that. Yes, so, yes. Um, so right now we have the same ranking. Right. Two two for two. Let's see. Let's see. There's 38 oh, movies in total. It will not be the same. It's not going to be the it same. It's going to be very be interesting. Same. But you know what? You know what? What? You know what? You know what? You know what? <laughs> That's make oh. more efforts for family. Let's be honest. Pitch to Netflix. It's funny. You know what else is funny? This week's episode. <laughs> and it's over. I would hope so. That's it for this week's episode. Now that's what I call a franchise. <laughs> next week we'll be watching the next film in the franchise. I'm very excited for this. The 1966 film Batman. Nice. Wait. So they waited like. Almost twenty years. They waited. Yeah. Like, no, no, nothing else. Well, I mean, like the comics, which well, besides, came out every month for. I, I know. I mean, like media wise, like not comic. I guess not. I don't know. Interesting. There might have been. Maybe there was some television animation. Maybe I don't. Know. You'll have to do some research. Mm, yes, of course, of course. Okay, now but ask, yes. Ask me the question. So it's gonna be. Well, I'm saying it's the reason why I did a dramatic pause is because it's it's also called Batman. There's like five things just called Batman. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. So yes, yes. So next week we'll be watching the next film, 1966 film, Batman. Viviana, save me here. Where can they find us? <laughs> <laughs> you guys probably already know, but you can find us wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Franchise Podcast. We know you have many podcasting options, and we thank you for choosing us. Peace out, guys. Bye-bye.